Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. It's good to be back with you today. It's good to be back. It's good to be back talking about the stuff I like to talk about. It's good to just be doing this. And it was a project. It was a, I want to make this something. What, what is that something? I don't know. Um, obviously, it's got to be controversial because one of my, if not controversial. So, today, we're going to start off with a game. Yeah, Ian's Funhouse Game. It's a game you're going to have to do in your own head because I'm going to post this afterwards. Okay, it's going to be a who said what quote. So I'm going to read a quote and some historical figure has said it. Okay? The first one said by, oh, I thought you had me. Nope. I don't want you all to think you know, there's a crazy amount of drool coming up. No. No, no, no. The United States of America should have a foundation free from influence of clergy. That was the first one. Person number two said, Christianity neither is nor ever was. Part of the common law. Third quote. I guess they try to figure out who said it. The purpose of separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe and blood for centuries. That's the third one. Fourth one, I think, might be the easiest. Okay? I've given you one sort of letter. One of a letter. It's the easiest. See that hurricane? I think we should nuke it. Okay. Well, the first quote was said by our first president under the U.S. Constitution, George Washington. The United States of America should have a foundation free from influence of clergy. The second one, where, which was said, Christianity neither is nor ever was part of the common law. T.J., the anti-slave slaveholder. And the final one, the purpose of separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores the ceaseless strife that has soaked this. Is it, so they talked back then. The ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe with blood for centuries. That was James Madison, who most people call the writer of the Constitution. So, this week, in honor of the Founding Fathers, that was in the speech, in honor of the Founding Fathers, I had a page up here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, in honor of our Founding Fathers, Governor Jeff Landry, while saying, I'm honoring the Founding Fathers, signed into law a bill that would have, now will, require every public school to have the Ten Commandments. We're going to talk about Ten Commandments today. And if anything I say, you, you think, yeah, I heard that on George Carlin once. No, you didn't. All in your head. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. Religious belief. I have none. I have none. Also, personally, I don't think this is that big of a deal. 
Like, people can read something, and especially in a language they'll never learn, and say, uh, yeah, that's dumb, and walk away. But it is unconstitutional. And that's what we're going to talk about. It, how it is in relations to the U.S. Constitution. Which, by the way, if you're in America, is your right to breathe. So what are the first few words of the Constitution? Oh, well, what's the first few words? Let's see. Let's see here. I know them, but I want to look at them. Wording of the U.S. Constitution. Okay. I would be that guy who would read the Declaration of Independence and say it's the Constitution. So I just want to make sure I don't do that. Because that would be embarrassing. And I've had people do that. And I've made fun of them. Viciously. Okay, let's get over the... I know, it's Article 1. I'm just going to put Article 1. Article 1 is what talks about the executive branch. Article 1, Section 1. I just don't want to miss it. Uh, for an N. Okay, here we go. Article 1, Section 1. All legislative powers shall be vested in Congress and in N shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which, which shall consist of a House and a Senate. Okay? So we got one branch. Yeah, yeah, we're doing the three branches of government. Article 2 of the Constitution. Let's read it. The executive power shall be vested in the President of the United States. He shall hold his office during a time of four years and together with the Vice President, chosen for the same term, be elected as follows. Then it goes into the procedure to elect the President, which is not necessary for this video. And now let's read Article 3. Yeah. Okay, da da da, having fun. Article 3. The judicial power of the U.S. Constitution shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress. Wait a minute. Congress, uh, legislative, I thought. Ooh, there's a little intermingling going on. Right at the end when I talk about treason. This will come in. This will come into play. Such inferior courts as the Congress, nay, from time ordain and establish. The judges, both of the Supreme and inferior courts, should hold their office during, during good behavior, behavior spelt in the Queen's English, and shall at times receive for their services a compensation, which shall not be diminished during... Uh, during their continuance in office. And they'll keep giving themselves raises and raises and raises. Although, back in the day, actual Supreme Court justices had to ride the circuit and go to local towns and decide local cases before they started forming the lower courts. Just a little interesting factoid. So, okay. But he didn't mention church and state yet. Ha oh, ha. Oh. I will get there. Let's look at the First Amendment. This is all going to come together while I read the articles. Okay. First Amendment. Every, everyone has something to say about the amendment that gives people the right to talk about stuff. <laughs> Religious freedom. The one with religious freedom amendment? I don't believe there's such one called, or is that just what we're deciding to name it? Okay. This is the First Amendment. 
not the Religious Freedom Amendment, like I'm sure some left-wing organization has decided to call it, which is just going to confuse the courts. Okay? The First Amendment guarantees freedoms concerning religion, expression, assembly, and the right to petition. It forbids, forbids, did your parents when you were a kid ever say, I forbid you from promoting one religion over others and also restricting an individual's religious practice. It guarantees freedom of expression by prohibiting Congress from restricting the press or the rights of the individual to speak freely. Ha! Huh. Good luck suing me for defamation. It also guarantees the right of the citizens to assemble peacefully and to petition their government. I brought up the three branches for a very important reason. Because I want, so we're going to do a constitutional analysis of the Ten Commandments. And, I mean, we already know it's a religious thing. It shouldn't be going up there anyway. So, like, story over at that point, good night. But, I, you know, that would be a boring one, and I haven't done one for a while. So, I, so they are going to put up, they already announced it. I usually know what I'm going to talk about a few days earlier. I picked this like 10 minutes ago. But so, sometimes those are the best, okay? Okay, this dude talking about his fourth grade experience, which I don't care about. Okay, Jeff Landry signed a law requiring the classroom receiving public funds from kindergarten to college. From kindergarten to college to post the Ten Commandments on a poster at least 11 inches by 14 inches. I'm curious if teachers are going to start suing. I'd support them. Printed on large, easily readable font. Because there were three versions of the so-called Decalogue in the books of Exodus and Deuteronomy, and many translations, the legislature had to specify the words the, that the poster or framed document the law requires. And, of course, they chose the most complex in the most arcane language. So that's what we're going to rock and roll with. But just look at that concept alone. Just that vote. When Congress is voting on the language, which Ten Commandments to use, we've already lost. They didn't even made it past one. One is unconstitutional, First Commandment. But, okay, First Commandment. Would you believe I have not read these in a long time? And, you know, I'm wrong. So... Maybe, maybe this is God talking to me. Yeah. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no gods before me. Thou shalt not make thyself any graven images. You know, that's funny. Because I was watching... What was that movie oh, with McLovin? Where Jonah Hill could... All he could draw was dicks. And the girl saw him. That's what I thought of when I read that. It was just Jonah Hill draw, drawing dicks in McLovin. Really funny movie. But what does that one teach? How does that break the Constitution? 1% of America, of America admit to belonging to a polytheistic religion. What's polytheism? It's where you believe in multiple gods. I saw one religion that had up to 330 million gods. 
But this one is very specific. I am, am the Lord thy God. What if somebody who practices polytheism comes in? So, they can feel unwelcome. They can have what they believe made fun of. Once again, I lace the Constitution on the First Commandment. Second Commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Didn't you hear me just read about freedom of speech while I was reading about freedom of religion? I have the right to say anything I want about God. Those guys, like almost 300 years ago, gave me the right to say, God stinks if I want to. Great. See, I'm willing to go to hell for you guys. So, we're restricting speech in a public school. Because, we're, you know, we're saying, can't take his name in vain. If I stub my toe, you know, it's just, it better start and end it, damn it. Okay? So, those, uh, so those three I just wrapped up. I mean, if you're an artist and if you want to draw something graven, fucking draw it. Unless it's causing problems with your mental health and make you want to do something else, then please seek help. But if you just like draw dicks, who cares? Okay. So those are three, which, oh, no, those are four, because I had the, you know. Oh, oh, no, I just missed one. See, like, they're so, like, I'm giving myself head to, similar, because they wanted to make it 10, because 10 is, like, a sales pitch, a sales pitch number. No one would, nobody would have cared if he's like, ah, oh, Moses, I got the uh, seven commandments here. <laughs> seven commandments. Get three more and talk to me. So, like, there's some puffery on the list. That's all George. Okay. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. No more Sunday school? If they got to put that up, they got to agree. They can never call us in on the weekend for anything. Like, can't have one without the other. Can't have weekend activities and, and a rest on the Sabbath. And I got an issue with the Sabbath thing, too, in the Bible. God, all-powerful, made everything. Snap of a finger. Six days, eh. That's a puffed-up number. To, he had to rest. He needed nappy time. God was tired? Did God have bags under his eyes? Did he get did he get a uh Tempur-Pedic? Wait, he, he would just have to make a Tempur-Pedic to sleep on. But back then there was like not everyone asking him to do crap for him every Second of every day, and he got tired then. Well, he's got no idea what's ahead of him. What's ahead of him? So, the Sabbath is nonsense, and it's nonsense to the extent that can we overrule those damn blue laws in Bergen County, New Jersey, so I can go shopping on Sunday? There's still laws in place in Bergen County, New Jersey that all stores have to be closed on Sunday. And it comes from religion, which is stupid. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord, 
I assume that second part means to get, hope they have long life. I hope everybody has long life. But what if your parents suck? Or what if you're fighting with them? Uh, as of today, I honor my father and my mother. That is very subject to change tomorrow, based on their mood or my mood. And also, respect is earned. It's earned. It's not given. I think this is part of Thy God giveth thee. Oh, I, I think I left out that part. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give, giveth thee. Yeah, okay, that's all long. Okay. Next one. Thou shalt not kill. Good in hindsight, it's a good idea. You know, maybe he should have taken his own advice and not killed every single thing that existed in the world. No irreverence. But, you know, I'm not down with murder. But then maybe he shouldn't have created so many microorganisms that every time I make any movement... I'm killing something. I'm a murderer with every step I take. And it's impossible not to be unless you put yourself, pay a lot of money to get a fully clean bubble to live in. Murderer. Seriously, it does not say thou shalt not kill humans. That doesn't say it. It doesn't say that. Thou shalt not kill. Literal interpretus says bullshit. So, so far, all of these are nonsense. Yeah. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I like this one, actually. Adultery is bad. But it should be said... Thou shalt not commit adultery as defined by the members of the marriage. That would include all different types of marriages, all different types of sexual relations, where something could be adultery in one, but not adultery in another. You know? Just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you fuck someone, tell your spouse. Because maybe you agreed earlier. You, earlier, you both could. Or maybe you didn't, and it's cheating. Different strokes for different folks. Open-mindedness. Okay. Thou shalt not steal. Unless it's land and your Christian crusaders throughout the years. No, no, that one's good. Thou shalt not steal. You know what? I'll give them that one. Oh God, you know, you know, they haven't made it impossible not to steal, like with the killing one. It's impossible. So, I'm giving them that one. Okay. Being we changed the adultery one, which we reworked. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lying. I mean, I did have a landlord once who really liked to talk, so I definitely created plans I didn't really have. So, you know, like, yeah. Maybe they should just add a comma with bad intent. Okay? Now, the next two would just kill the economy. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Well, that's stupid as all hell. That, that's what keeps capitalism and the economy going. It, you know, I see someone's house. It's beautiful. It's nice. I want a nicer house. I go out. I work harder. I try to earn a nicer house. Leave it alone. 
Leave coveting alone. It's in the brain. It doesn't, you know, you're not actually doing something. You're just admiring something. Like you all coveted me, right? Okay? And the next one is, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant. Oh, wait a minute. They were about to take back the adultery one. But. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his cattle, nor his cattle, nor anything that is thy name. But basically, if your neighbor owns it, don't fuck it. There you go. Your neighbor owns it, don't fuck it. But no. It talks about having maidservants and manservants. But just two ahead of it, it said not to cheat. But then it's cheating happened all the time. And uh, long story short, this isn't going to last. Roy Moore tried this, and uh, he went into the wing of old politics. People who ran for office and rumors of pedophilia came out right before the election category. Roy, but... I'll be honest with you. I'm lost on this one. What's the end game? I can't believe this is because this governor or anyone thinks this is a good idea or constitutional. Sorry, just don't think people are that dumb. But people are very manipulative. So what's the end game here? This guy was just elected governor. Well, he just took office in 2024. So maybe he needs something to fight with, fight on. And being, they're all conservative, not all, mostly conservative Christian in Louisiana, he'll probably get a lot of support for this. Nationally, he won't. Uh, Trump came out supporting it. Shocking. You see how, like, the Constitution violates them? Multiply that by a million and you have how much... T Imagine tr Trump coming to a school, standing near the Ten Commandments. The school would burn down. And the, I would stop being an atheist if Donald Trump went to give a speech at a school, had the Ten Commandments on one side next to him, oh, and on the other side... Oh, a historical rendition of what happened at the time. I kid you not. They put this in the literature for that. A historical rendition of fiction. That sounds like a good book. A historical rendition of fiction. That's why I have you guys. Like, it's so dumb. And the funny thing is, you have the like really religious Catholic president, Biden, who's going to come out against this because he knows how to separate his personal beliefs from the Constitution. And you're going to have Trump, who I don't think is red either, and he's going to go with whatever the last argument he heard was, which is probably going to be some nonsense on Fox News. On that note, going to bed. I'm back. If you have topic ideas, throw them. I know we got to do uh, Scott Peterson and Vince McMahon. But um, I was doing work today, and I just thought Ten Commandments. So, long story short, I, I say that way too much. I got to work on that. Um, they're going to make a bunch of them, and they're going to be a collector's item within a few months. Yay, USA!